Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Shintaro Higashi Show with Peter Yu. Today, we're going to talk about Niwaza. What an interesting thing, right? Niwaza <laughs> gets so much love, so much hate. It's very right. polarizing uh-huh. uh, when it comes to the groundwork of judo. Right. right? Niwaza meaning groundwork. groundwork. Yeah. Yep. Right. So, you got Tachiwaza, standing moves, Niwaza, lying down moves or ground moves. Right. right? So what's the let's kind of start with the definition of it because maybe some yeah. people are not familiar with the, the actual groundwork of judo so what is the goal of groundwork in the goal judo? Of groundwork so what happens when you get to the ground right so right. now you know the rules are always changing but mm-hmm. now they define niwaza as knees and elbows touching the floor mm-hmm. if a knee and elbow touches the floor it goes to niwaza right for one person or both i, I forgot for one, I person. Okay. one person okay right? oh okay so if I do like a drop Sanagi and I drop to my knees and I don't get it, the guy could still pick me up from there and load me and t- throw me onto my head. Right. That still counts. Yeah. Okay. Now, like That's if I miss the drop Sanagi and if I get my elbows to the floor, now it's considered Niwaza. Oh, the elbows yeah. have to touch. That's how so, I understand right. it. Yeah. I see. Yeah. The rules yeah. are always changing. Right. So once you get to Niwaza, you can't really throw anymore from there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess you could theoretically still pick them up and dump them, but you're not going to get any points for it. Right. Right. You could choke them, armbar them, or mm-hmm. you could turn them over to their back and pin them for 20 right. seconds. Right. right That's right. sort of the rule. Right. Right. So it's kind of interesting. It's def- definitely a different rule set than, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you would see in a lot of other grappling martial arts. Mm-hmm. What's uh, interesting is that if there's no forward progression for five seconds, mm-hmm. it goes back, mate, up. back up right. to your feet. Yeah. Right? And it's kind of subjective, like well, they don't really define forward uh, progression, but if there's movement, they'll just kind of let it go. You know, right. and this, th- these kind of rules are always changing, mm-hmm. right? And then sometimes, ah, we should give him more time or, oh, we should do this or that. Oh, let's change it to that. But that's the general consensus. Like that hasn't changed. If there's movement, if there's progression, they will let it keep going. Right, right. Yeah. And then that's usually the progression up. just, if someone looks, if one person is trying to do something, it's, I think the ref usually lets it go, right? Like it let them let usually the person they'll, they'll continue. let them go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I've seen some crazy egregious things, like you know, yeah, oh, but... I like the person on bottom, the guy's in trouble. Okay, mate, mate, stop. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that could yeah. that potentially happen, you know? Right. It's a way that's sort of uh, there's a little bit of um, subjectivity in the rules to for the ref to kind of influence the right. match, or having a you know a certain ref go one direction or another can actually affect the outcome. Mm-hmm. So it's not like a f- heavily favored thing, you know. People don't love it, right? Right, and then most people, you know, because judo is eighty percent on the feet, seventy percent on the feet, arguably, depending on where you go, where you train. Mm-hmm. Right, I'm talking about, about like the international circuit. Right, you see what percentage of matches are, uh, you know, on their feet versus on the ground, and then how many people actually take the opportunity to go for it. Right, it's de- definitely skewed. Right. right. There's a lot more standing than the groundwork in judo. Obviously, we all know this. Right. Mm. So a lot of international players and top level players uh, tend to focus more on the tachiwa the, the portion. Of course, they're going to do that. That just makes sense. Right. In, yeah. In the match management perspective, they don't sometimes they don't even try to do much on the ground because they want us their specialty is in tachiwaza, So they want to preserve energy. Right. Yeah, and then, you know, the criticism of, like, why won't the guy go for this? He mm-hmm. has the back. But it's like, okay, you know, maybe they're, you know, down by a score. They want to get a throw because they don't feel like they're going to be able to finish this person in a certain mm-hmm. amount of time. You know, there's a minute and a half left. If I try to transition to the pin and the arm bar, I could burn 20 seconds. That's 20 seconds that I need. You know, mm-hmm. I think I have a Tayatoshi here or a Harai Goshi or I'm confident that I could counter him, right? Okay, I'm not going to do anything. Mm-hmm. Look at the ref, and the ref's like, all right, you're, not, you're clearly not <laughs> right. going for anything. Back up to your feet, right? Right. So it is also part of the strategy. You know, mm-hmm. it's not always the case where you have to capitalize on, uh, you know, having the person's back or right. having the person's, you know, being in half guard and you have to take out a leg and having their back on the floor, mm-hmm. which we like to call leg extraction position, right? Right, right. So so that's, that's what Newaza is, and then that's kind of like how – that was as played out in the competition. So, how about in the, on the pra- for practice? Like, so you've been on like, you know, you run practice for a lot of hobbyists. Yeah. You've been involved in like high level judo practices. So, how uh, are there any differences in uh, how they how two camps of you know, practice approach Newaza? Like, how do yeah, you approach sure. it? And yeah, if you're strictly competition, yeah, right, you should focus on really two positions 
Right. You know what I mean? Uh, the main one is transitions because that's where mm-hmm. judo matches are. The Niwaza really shines in judo, right? The transitional right. aspect of it. Going for Tomonage, going for Juji, mm-hmm. going for Tomonage, going for the Kanta Chuck, things of that nature. Person mm-hmm. goes for Sumigaishi, splitting the legs and passing and right. hitting. Right. So those quick hit the mat and go kind of things because that doesn't require a lot of setting up and time mm-hmm. and full approaches. It's like you hit the mat and go. You're anticipating going to the ground and going. Mm-hmm. That's one thing that you should always train. Right. And I'm a big, big believer that. And if there's a lot of competitive athletes in the room who are doing judo competitively, Mm -hmm. I would definitely focus on that. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's one aspect of it. Right. Right. And then you want to look at the the major positions of judo. Mm -hmm. For instance, like the over under pass is a big one. Right. Mm -hmm. Somebody misses a tomonage or a sacrifice throw and then capitalizing from that. And then also, you know, attacking the turtle. Right. That's the most common position. Right, right. You miss a throw, you go down, the opponent's on their stomach. Attacking from there is the biggest thing in judo, Mm -hmm. right? And, of course, the rule sets really, really matter here, right? Mm Because if you look at, like, Greco-Roman or freestyle wrestling, same as judo. All they have to do is stall. Like, flatten out, not get turned, and that's it. Ref says stop. It's not working. Back up to your feet. So Mm -hmm. judo, freestyle, and Greco have something in common on the ground, right? The rule sets are very, very similar in that way. Right. Of course, wrestling and freestyle and Greco doesn't get the same criticisms for having that rule set that shapes the sport mm-hmm. because, you know, judo is the martial arts, not very martial artsy, right? Yeah. And that's but, where the sport yeah. versus martial arts thing comes into play. Uh-huh. We'll talk jiu-jitsu, about that later. Yeah. yeah. And jujitsu, you want to regard. You want to put them right. back in between the legs and you want to face them. You don't want to give up your back because if they put their feet in and the hooks in inside the legs, they get points for that. Control mm. in the back. Right, 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 right. right. Oh, because each So the person on bottom, yes, is incentivized to not let the hooks in and then to face their opponent. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's what it looks like. If you're looking at collegiate wrestling, the person on bottom gets points for standing up, getting away. Right. That is the most similar thing with like MMA and fighting. Because if you get taken down in fighting and they're behind you, you're going to try to get back up to your feet and, you know, get Mm -hmm. out of there. Right. So, right, right. you know, stand-ups and mat returns become a thing. So that's how sort of the rule sets kind of shape the, how the how, looks. Yeah, yeah. Right. I don't know if that was your original question, but I started. No, no it's okay. So, then, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, the rule set definitely, uh, especially if you want to focus on competition, you know, you have to focus on what will work best within oh, the rule set, question. right? Yes. Yeah. So what does the practice Nawaza look like in my dojo? Yeah. Right? So when, when people yes. are not really focused on competition yeah. yeah so i'm looking at the room if there's let's just say there's 20 people in the room right, right. what percentage of the people are actually competing in judo in the sport of judo right mm-hmm. maybe two or three right one percent right. you know five percent or ten percent whatever it is so those people have to do that that mm-hmm. goes without saying right you know what i mean but the majority of the people in the room are there for self-defense right mm-hmm. people who are supplementing their jiu-jitsu training people who want to meet new friends, people who want to learn how to do self-defense, how does this apply in the real world, right? That's the bulk of the people in the class. Right. Therefore, just doing transitions over under passes and then attacking the turtle where the person's stagnant and stationary, Mm -hmm. not really what they are actually truly looking for. Right, right, right. So that's why I'll take a little bit more of a variety approach where what do you guys want to learn today kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Of course, I will never ask that because sometimes, you know, they request something and it, it's not to the standard of everybody in the room. Like this person wants to learn this, but no one in the room will understand that. This person Baron wants to learn that. Yeah, Baron <laughs> Bolo, but it's like, okay, you know, not that Baron Bolo is too complex, mm-hmm. right? It's like most people in the room wouldn't find that interesting. Right. right. For us, for <laughs> yeah. us. So it's like, yeah, I'm not going to ask, you know, specifically. So it's like, what are the needs of the majority of the people in the room? Uh-huh. And what sort of fulfills all the things, mm-hmm. right? For instance, if I were to teach something like a bailout tomonage into a juji from the bottom, mm-hmm. that's something that a jiu-jitsu person could get a lot of benefit from. Right? right. Self-defense, I mean, you could kind of argue that because, you know, oh, you're on bottom position and you're looking for juji, mm-hmm. right? It's applicable to judo sport. You're learning the mechanics and the basics of the armbar and the mm-hmm. tomonage. So, like, that kind of checks all the boxes. Right, right. right? And it's relatively safe also. Safety is another component where I pick mm-hmm. the criteria for what I'm going to teach that day. Right, right. So, like, that's kind of how I would approach teaching the Nawaza in the room. Mm -hmm. Right, if that makes sense. I see. So, so it's kind of, we're kind of moving to the next topic of, like, how Judo Nawaza is different from other arts and whatnot, other, uh, the groundwork from other arts. But 
if you go to a BJJ school, they really focus on like all the different stages on the ground, I guess, like different positions, yeah. you know, and then they go for their rounds are usually long, you know, yeah. on the ground and whatnot. But it seems like even for hobbyists at your dojo, uh, you tend to focus on specific positions, like quick, quick attacks on the ground. Yeah. Uh, so would you, would you say my assessment is correct? Or do you s still like try to teach people the, like a longer that was a, uh, mm. I guess, like kind of like a little bit of both, flow. right? Yeah, <clears throat> it's a little bit of both. The long form that was where you're setting your grips and setting up things right. and reading them and then looking for things and mm. trying to back up here and progressively improve position and incrementally hold those positions, yeah. right? That stuff is great. But like I said, a good portion of the people in the room mm -hmm. are there for self defense, right? And they're right, and then mm. they're for judo. So it's like that quick sort of quick pass ball and pin. Control mm. the head, hold for, I, you know, for Nawaza, like I asked my students to hold them for five seconds. One, two, right. three, four, five, and then and transition then and yeah. try to isolate and then work, right? Let yeah. the person work out, person escapes, what to do next, right? Things like this. So you don't have anyone squeezing and holding someone for, you know, 45 mm -hmm. seconds in a practice and no one's going to get anything out of that. Right, right. Right. So I teach them fight off your back for five seconds, five to 10 seconds, and then, you know, work out of it or let the person out. Something of this nature, mm -hmm. right? So that quick nuanza, I think, is beneficial for a lot of people. I mm -hmm. think it sort of hits that Good spot. Balance. Yeah, you know, yeah. If we had like two hours of just dedicated nuanza five times a week, then of course, I'm going to go yeah. a little bit more long form. But because time is so limited, right? right. I, I do like sort of the quick, direct, misdirection yeah. nuanza sort of structure. I see. You know, I wish I had a little bit more time. Um, because jujitsu is sort of on the opposite side of the spectrum when it comes to judo and grappling and nuanza right. time, right? The time restrictions, there are none in jiu-jitsu. Right, right. Start, go. Right? Yeah. And it just, whatever happens, happens, and it just keeps going and keeps happening. Mm -hmm. Right? In that case, it's like you could set up your grips, lock them down, prevent them from moving. Right? Mm-hmm. Right. Restrict the legs, control the hips, <laughs> pass one leg, half full guard to half guard, climb up the body, get on the arms, you know, control the head, cross face. Yeah, yeah. Keep them there, secure it, go to north-south, try to isolate a limb, create like a neck-arm fork situation. Mm -hmm. Right, and then incrementally work because there is no time restriction. Right, I see. Right, and that's yeah. great. That's great, right? Yeah. But usually in any sort of fighting, mm -hmm. right, I, I think there's always going to be some kind of a time restriction. So you're going right. to have to be able to jump into something really quick and explode into something really fast. And of course, you don't want to explode into an arm ball without control. I'm not saying that. Right, right. right. But you need that sort the of quickness. quick nawaza yeah. situation. And I think that is one of the biggest advantages of judo nawaza for the mm. people who specialize in it and do it well. Right. I see. If you look at Kanto, yeah. he has a tremendous nawaza skill and skill set mm. that's unlike anybody in the world. Right, right. Right. And I think that's something that we, we should, judo people should really double down on focus. Right. Double. And then there are people mm. who do it. Yeah. People who go for flying arm bars and. Yeah. You know, juji transitions and the kanto choke, this and that, and right. Uh, but that's where judo really shines. Right? I see the quick, explosive, and you know, get the position yeah. and then finish. Yeah, so, exploding yeah. into a transitionary nawaza attack yeah. with severe time restrictions. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's that's the beauty of judo, and I, I tell my students all this, this all the time. Right, and I think that kind of begs the question, you know, so. I, I'm sure there are like a lot of cultural reasons and then the, the popular of BJJ, but it seems like judokas in North America, especially yeah. in America, tend to criticize that aspect. Oh, like, you they know. They do. They do. Yeah. Why don't we let the people, you know, let people work more on the ground? And I saw a lot of the criticism from the past Olympics ju that just happened. Yeah. Um. So what do you think about that criticism? I guess you kind of addressed it, but also... Is, since you spend a lot of time in Japan, how do they yeah. view Nawaza there? And like mm, they that's a very, those are them. two very yeah. good questions. Two yeah. very different questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Judo in the United States, right? In terms, yeah. in terms of population, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is a dominant grappling force. Right, right. Actually, not so much. Not so much. I'm talking like recreationally. Not mm. We're not talking about wrestling here. We're talking about judo, judo jiu-jitsu, yeah. martial arts Art. grappling. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm. And then if you look at martial arts grappling, you could argue like Shao Jiao or yeah. you know, Sambo or you know, 
the shoot wrestling and mm-hmm. judo, BJJ. Like now we're looking at just the grappling martial arts. And in right. terms of that population wise, BJJ is the dominant one. Mm-hmm. Right. So they get to create this narrative. Right. right. Judo Newaza is like, eh, you know, and of course, it's easy to criticize it. Easy. Mm-hmm. And there's things about Judo Newaza that I don't agree with. I think we should do a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Right. But the people in Judo too have not really doubled down and then pushed forth like why Judo Newaza is spectacular. Right, right. It's actually, I don't think it's that spectacular, truthfully. <laughs> but like why it can be spectacular. Uh huh. Right. There's not too many people who have done it in a big stage that's exciting in a way where mm. it's like, and then taught it in a way where it's like. Right, right. Because right. so I think that's the focus the, is on the Tachiwaza, I guess, usually. Focus is on the Tachiwaza, of yeah. course. You know, it's like uh, Newaza for Judo, it's like a side dish. You mm. know what I mean? It's like the potatoes on the side. Right. <laughs> you know, you, you go to Peter Luger's, you get a ribeye, you're like, man, the steak is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. No one's going to sit there talking raving about the pot- potatoes. But you know that thing, it, it, that's, a, <laughs> that's a pretty accurate uh, analogy because I think, yeah, it's on the side, but that's why, like, you got to get the basics down, I guess. Like, nothing yeah. fancy. You don't want to, when you go to a steakhouse, you don't want to fancy potatoes. You want, yeah. like, basic, good, you know, fundamental, that's right. fundamentally sound potatoes. <laughs> That's why, yeah, man. You, yeah. you want fancy potatoes? You go to a potato restaurant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or a vegan restaurant. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. so that's yeah. So, it, it's like a, you know, the the focus. A lot of people miss the point of it, I guess, of, of judo newaza in a way. Yeah. Like what they're what they're trying to do with yes. yeah yes yeah. So so yeah. now to answer the question with Japan. Mm-hmm. Japan, similarly, they do focus a lot on Nawaza. Like, Kukushikan University is kind of known for their Nawaza, but they do a lot of turnover stuff. So, right. situational Nawaza drills. Okay, leg mm. extraction position. Uh, mm-hmm. Your leg is trapped. You have half guard. You have the unhook. The person's flat on the back. You have to take your leg out. And then, right. on a time-restricted thing, you have 10 seconds to do it. Go. Mm. Stuff like this. Right? Sometimes, like, you have 30 seconds to do it. Go. Figure it out. Mm. Uh, right? And then, you know, attacking the turtle. Turn mm. him over and pin him. This right. is it. Go top bottom wrestling too. It's like, all right, you know, we're working top bottom now. Mm-hmm. A lot of the times you do a drill, three person drill, top bottom out. Mm-hmm. Right. right. I'm on top. You're on bottom. And then mm-hmm. there's this person out. Timer goes. We do it. Now you're out. I'm on bottom. Next person comes on top. Mm-hmm. Timer goes. And then we just rotate. Right. Right. right top right. bottom out. Okay. Switch the direction. Mm-hmm. You know, get in groups of three. Top right. bottom out. Right. So like that's something that I've seen, you know, over and over and they get pretty good with it. Right. You know, so I don't really do that so much with, at my dojo. Right. We that's do probably some competition stuff. focused. Right. And more competition focused. You know, yeah. and if we're going to do a competition and there's a month out. Then, you know, every single Newaza, every right. other Newaza will be kind of like that. Right. You know? But there are things that I teach in the dojo for Newaza that really, really influ- influence uh, the skill mm. of my people. And one of those things is if you have a pin. You control it for five seconds, mm-hmm. let them work out of it, transition into other things. I right? see. Yeah. It's... That's one thing. Right. And now once you get submitted, mm-hmm. the Nawaza doesn't end. It's right, catch right. and release, right? Extend, hyper, don't know, hyperextend. You yeah. get the arm bar. Ah, t- mate, stop. You got it. And then the mm-hmm. person releases it and then mm-hmm. lets the arm slide out. So they work on the actual escape. Mm-hmm. I see. Okay. Yeah. So it's secured. Arm bar secured. Now, ah, okay, you got it. They get to release it. The person's not cranking on it anymore. So now they're learning to turn out of it, move out of it in a safe way. No right? waste of time. You already got it. No waste yeah. of time. And then the person's eventually going to let it go. And now a person's on the bottom gets to train as if they mm-hmm. missed. They let got the guy got away, whatever it is. Right, right. right. So now there's continuity in the Nawaz around. Mm-hmm. Right? Makes there's sense. no like reset starting, reset starting. Right. And then no one knee wrestles in my dojo. Mm, yeah, yeah. No knee wrestling. Uh, pick wrestling. a position, yeah. Guard pick a position, what? you know, or if we're doing, if there's not too many people in the room, especially at the end of the evening when everyone has is tired and left, mm. then it's like, all right, we're doing tachiwaza, then waza, continue on the ground, mm. no forward progression for ten seconds, then you'd, you're back on your feet. I see, right, right. Or if but, you could force a stalemate on the ground, then back up to I your feet. Keep things dynamic and all. Yeah, yeah, keep things dynamic, right? And then you know, because the knee versus knee that doesn't exist. Right. <laughs> and a lot of dojos do that still. Right, right, right. It doesn't right. exist because the way to get advantage is to stand up. And if I stand up, you're going to stand up. Right, right. Okay? No right? one so would like, actually knee wrestle, I guess. No, there is no knee wrestling in real life. Yeah. <laughs> it just never happens. So yeah. It's like, why 
You would just practice, stand up. You know, You're right. Yeah. Spending 30 seconds of shoving and pushing on, on yeah. our knees, you know, uh, just for the sake of, right. And naturally just practice kind of shapes out like that for a lot right. of places. Yeah. Right. So it's like a lot of the times it'll be what my p- personal preference right now is like not pick a position top or bottom, mm. but it's like, Hey, can you start on my back? Mm. Timer right. goes boom. So now I'm working to get out of the bad position. The person's yeah. looking to finish. And now if he finishes me, choke, ah, okay, now he lets me escape. And now I get to work as if I escaped. And that person works as if the person got away. Right. And now there's you're into the thing. Right, right. right. And then the round never stops because let's just say I get up, I pass, I pin, I go for an on bar. He taps. Okay, now I just loosen it. And the person has to work out of there. So it just right. never stops. You're just picking a point A. And then the round continues sort of indefinitely. Right, right. right? And so you get three minutes of actual, if, if, I'm, if we're doing three minute rounds, mm-hmm. of actual, the whole time is just You're constantly, moving, yeah. right? Position, 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 as opposed to like, you could easily knee wrestle for 20 seconds, mm-hmm. push the person down, pin them for 20 seconds, right? Person taps, and now you're back to knee wrestling, knee wrestling again, again for 20 seconds. That's a minute gone out of the three right. minutes. A right. waste of time. And I've done, I've done this for many years. And I've seen it many, many times. That's the best way to waste a lot of time. <laughs> good point. Good point. So the so now we're we're still on the topic of kind of Japan. So and whenever people talk about you know judo newaza and especially in the context of Japan, they all talk about kusen judo. <coughs> yeah. um, how they are like? Yeah, I don't really know much about that. Actually. But oh, okay, yeah. maybe we'll just skip that then. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a Nawaza based judo system. Is it? I, what I heard is it's a, it's actually a rule set like for certain high schools or something. Yeah, yeah, it's like a different type of competition that it's smart. Something you know, like a, a rule set. Uh, yeah, it's smart because judo's dangerous, man. Right. Even in Japan, you know, they had hundreds of kids that died from getting thrown a sotogari. Right. You know, when judo was in all the high schools in the country, they, mm. they weren't enough qualified instructors. And it's like they're reading a book, watching a video, and they're like, go teach this. And then this is how you do mm. an osoto. And you get one athletic kid slamming a non-athletic kid. They right. hit their head, and now they're dead. Um, right? I see. So it's like, of course, they're going to say, you know what? Stand-up is too dangerous. Let's just go to the ground and work position and do niwaza. Right? I see. Because there's this fail-safe. The tap, the mate, the uh, you know, the submission situation. It's like, okay, you're choking me. I tap. You let go. Mm-hmm. Right, 99% of the time in the room, people will let go. No one's cranking on your arm. If you're right. in a dojo that is safety-oriented and that's part of the culture, no right. one's going to go ahead and just grab your arm and break it. Right. So it's like, tap. Okay. And then there's it. no like uncontrolled right. impact. Safe. Yeah. Yeah, like, there's no hard, high impact. It's not, yeah. you're not getting need in the face, maybe. Mm. <laughs> certain people. <Yeah. laughs> but like, that's not part of the rules, the rules of the right. game. You right. know, it's not part of the goal of the game. The goal is to restrict your movement and strangle you. Mm-hmm. Right. right. I restrict your movement. There's no impact when there's movement restriction. Right. As opposed to someone lifting you up the floor and slamming you back down to the ground. Right, right, right. There's a lot of impact there. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Restrict your movement, strangling you. I'm getting strangled. Okay, okay. I can't breathe. Stop. Tap, tap, tap. Okay, the person, let's go. That's it. Right. That That's like the motivation behind like because for to protect the students uh during competition yeah. and stuff yeah yep yeah yep, yep. so that's and co- i love what yeah. the jiu-jitsu did with the gi and the no gi mm-hmm. you know heel hooks inherently have a little bit more danger to it because right. there's rotational force right and right. then if you're rotating one way this is for beginners i'm saying right yeah yeah and then the person twists the other direction mm-hmm. because they don't know which way to turn yeah and now your knee's blown out right right, right. so they have a no gi division a gi division with different rule sets I think that's brilliant. It's like freestyle and Greco for wrestling. Mm-hmm. Right. I wish judo had a little bit more of that. You know, oh, I would love like, to see judo, like Greco style, the judo style now, and a freestyle rule set of wrestling, uh, judo, and yeah. have two separate divisions. I think that would be so cool. Yeah. And in the freestyle judo, you could do long form the waza. Like there's right, no right. stopping it. And you could right. go for leg locks, and then you could go for this and that. You think you think that'll be as popular as the uh, the current form? Probably not internationally, no. <laughs> yeah. The Europeans and those guys don't really like Nawaza historically. Yeah. The judo. In the I, judo uh, in, yeah. I don't think Koreans really focus no. on Nawaza either. No, they want to see people get bombed. And, yeah. you know, it's a necessary part of the game because, right? right? But it's such a, it's a small part of the game. Right. 
Right. Right. So it's like natural for people to shy away from it and double down on something good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not something good, but something that's the majority of the game. Right. So, so the, um, speaking of like the different divisions in wrestling and whatnot. So you kind of mentioned it earlier, but how, how about how groundwork is a part of wrestling, uh, yeah. but then they also get stood up, you know, but yeah. then people don't really mind that in a way like uh, i guess in america especially judo gets a lot of flack for that um, yeah well, well why do you think there's a discrepancy between p- how people perceive wrestling and judo groundwork? yeah the same yeah. same uh criticisms don't extend to judo because judo has the martial arts right. tag on it right judo's tagged as a martial art mm. and people have to understand there's sport judo and then martial arts judo it's right. a little bit different yeah right there's differences and now there's a freestyle judo movement in the United States, mm-hmm. right? And it was very, very small, but I think it's kind of gaining steam in like the Midwest mm-hmm. and stuff, you know, because yeah. you hear a lot about it, right? Mm-hmm. So wrestling, it's a sport first, right? It, it is a martial art, I believe it to be. Yeah. But it's not one of those martial arts where people sign up, it's like, I want to learn how to defend myself. I'm going to go find a wrestling dojo and go. Right, it's not like right, that, yeah. Right? People who are like, I want to learn a martial art. What kind of martial arts are there? I heard judo is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Let me go find a judo school. Oh, how come these guys are just, you know, trying to turn each other? Right, right. right. Why won't they just punch them in the side of the head if the person's on the stomach, like, burying down? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, well, you don't really punch in judo. Oh, how do you defend yourself then? I thought this was a self-defense situation. Uh Well, you could use some of these techniques for self-defense, like, but what if the guy starts throwing punches? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, so why are you trying to turn them? Well, like, there's a lot of, (laughs) I guess like dissidents there, right? Right, I mean, right. It just doesn't uh, make sense for a lot of people who are walking in. You know, I want to learn martial arts. Right, judo is right. kind of cool. Is this good for self defense? Like, this is the best thing for self defense. How and why? Right. Right. I think that's yeah, that's a good point because it's not. Yeah. Because and then yeah. there's these these dumb statistical things that people always kind of hold on to. It's like ninety five percent of ground mat fights go to yeah. end up in the ground. Like yeah, street fights so. end like, up on the ground. Whatever, even boxing yeah. ends up on the ground. You knock yeah. the person da- out. Like that person's <laughs> going down to the ground. Of course they're going to go to the ground. Everything, yeah. there's gravity's always pulling people downwards. Right, right, right. So it's like, yeah, you know, and you hear that. So it's like, okay, I guess, uh, you know, if you want to fight somebody, you know, grab this and that. So it's easy to criticize judo right. that way. You I know, see. Especially with the Olympics. Yeah. And I talk about this all the time when, you know, you're a spectator sport. Yeah. Right? And you're under the governance of the IOC mm-hmm. and these rule sets determine what the sport looks like. It mm-hmm. kind of goes a little bit further away from martial arts. It's a, it's, martial it's, is like warlike. In that context, right? judo is a sport. Yeah. Yeah. With like strict I mean, rules and yeah. Right. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, so I think that we talked a lot about newa, judo newaza. Um, yep the differences between other arts and then what, what makes it special and stuff. So, yeah. you know, the quick explosiveness of ne- uh, Juro Newaza really sets it apart from the groundwork of BJJ. Yeah. And it has its own merits. And, you know, I uh, hope people can now uh, ap- appreciate it better. Um, anything else before we finish the episode? Nope. That's it. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Shout out to Sanjay for always listening to every episode. <laughs> yeah. Right? That was a, what a nice message that we got. Yeah, from Sanjay, I know. Right? It's like, yeah. hey, I listen to every episode. I'm like, oh man, that, right? Appreciate your support, Sanjay. Yeah, it's such a niche. Yeah. podcast. Right, right. right. So it's like you do judo. More. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like how many people do actually do judo in the United States? It's like we're catering to that. Yeah. If you don't speak mm-hmm. English, you're not really listening to this podcast. Right. So it's yeah. Very niche. You know, uh-huh. and I know a lot of people who have reached out to me to try to give me advice is like branch off into martial arts, talk more about self, you know, being this or that and, uh-huh. you know, self-improvement. It's like, man, you know, I'm kind of like talking more. It's a very niche thing. And thank you for listening. Really, yeah. Thank you for listening. Cool. Yeah. And yeah. As always, yeah. Same here for me. You know, thanks for your support and uh, stay tuned for the next episode.